My name is Flora Newbigin. I'm 14 years old and I'm in the third year at Pimlico School. I live in Brixton in South London and I've got a sister who's 17 years old and a dog called Pippin. I love shopping and going to the cinema. My name's Tom Felton. I'm nine years old. I go to Cranwell School in the south of England. I have three brothers and I have a chinchilla called Stanley. I like to eat a lot, especially pizza. Um, I like to play football. I like to go roller skating. I like to go and have a good time with my friends at the cinema. Tom and Flora aren't much different from millions of other kids around the world. But in the summer of 1996, their lives changed from ordinary to extraordinary when they were offered the chance of a lifetime. They were selected from literally hundreds of other hopefuls to star in one of the biggest British movies of recent years. I got the part through my drama teacher at school because um, working title who made the film came to my school and asked if they had any girls who could play the part. And um, I was really, really excited. And um, and I said, well, do you think I've got any chance in getting the role? And she said, oh, I doubt it, because they're going to want American children or trained children who've been to drama school. So I wasn't going to get my hopes up. And everyone was saying, keep your feet on the ground. You know, you're probably not going to get it. But it's exciting while it lasts. Stolen? How dare you? We do not steal. We are borrowers. So I went to the first audition. And then I went to the second and the third. And it went to about five. And still now, it hasn't sunk in, I'm actually going to be in a film. Act. Peter Hewitt, the film's director, knew the moment he saw them that he'd found his two new stars. Flora, we just found one day, she, she had no acting experience and came in one day and she was just, just right. She had that right mix of energy and passion to be Ariete. Whee! And P. Green, too, we just found one day. We saw a lot of little kids and um, Tom Felton came in. My problem with him was trying to get him to stop laughing. Tell her, tell her off. He tried to make me stop laughing, but I really, I, I couldn't sort of stop it. But um, I, uh, I eventually did it in the end. Turn over cameras. Tom and Flora were to play P. Green and Arietti, the two heroes of a new feature-length adaptation of the classic children's book, The Borrowers. But you'd be mistaken for thinking that they were about to make it big in the movies. Quite the opposite, Borrowers are extremely small. Borrowers are like four or five inches tall, and they live under the floorboards. And um, they rely on human beings who live above them. They take the small things, a bit like, um say paper clips, nails, food to eat, like breadcrumbs and stuff like that, and then um, bits of material for clothes. One, two, three, go. With two successful Borrowers TV series already to their credit, the film's production company, Working Title, have had a special interest in the books for a number of years. The TV series that we did was, was pretty charming. It was very faithful to the original books, which were written by a woman called um, Mary Norton. And they had a great charm to them. This, I think, is more of a kind of action adventure involving little people, basically. And, and if anything, it's toughened up. But the whole story has been toughened up a little bit. <laughs> appealed to me about a little people movie was that you could do an entire action adventure sequence in that corner Run! and effects 
now as such that you could really do some amazing things. I wanted to get over the fact that they were little people very quickly and find out who they were, what was fun about them, mess around with their characters, and then just have it be this incredible chase movie through this strange world. Speed! You're going too fast! Over! Popular comedy actors Jim Broadbent and Celia Imry were cast as Tom and Flora's parents. I adore working with children. Every single time I have, I love it because they're so honest and they're so uncomplicated. You know, Tom will get fed up, you know, around half past 12 and just want to go and have lunch. Well, it's sort of what we all want to do, but we don't say, you know. He's a, they're both absolute delights. Come on, Arietti, stop dawdling. Your mother's gonna be cross enough as it is. I told him you weren't ready. Now look what's happened. He did it, he did it. He jumped right off the fridge. Pickering, put that marshmallow down and drink your milk. But I hate milk. She's in a state of complete anxiety for most of the whole sh film, actually, because um, the minute you meet her, she, um, she's worried because um, her children have gone borrowing for the very first time and they're late back. And so from then on in, really, trouble is afoot. The borrower is quiet, cautious, inconspicuous, non-existent. I remember being told about them by an aunt when I was little. It's an image that stays, really, the first time. Uh, you never quite get rid of it, I think, when you're told at that age four about the idea that there are borrowers, people under the floorboards who borrow. It stays with you, really. One, two, three, action! Every single way you look is something quite genius that they've made. Every, every day when I come in, I find something new. It's a different experience. You know, you're going from school and no changes. I mean, it's just like different just coming straight into here. I mean, you don't have a clue what it is, I mean, but it's just absolutely great. And action! Stop right there, Arietti Clock. What is the first rule of borrowing? The first rule of borrowing? Hmm, that's a tricky one. What was really strange about doing borrowers was I'd get this car picking me up in the mornings and driving me into this big studio. And I'd be in double science or something, but actually I was kind of on top of a fridge or something like that. The sheer scale of the film meant that the borrowers dominated the majority of the massive stages at Shepperton Studios for over four months, where huge sets and props were built to bring the tiny world of the borrowers alive. A big challenge for the film's production designer, Gemma Jackson. I think I was concerned about how this would all work, how the oversized sets would work. Everything has been blown up to 14 times the size. So our borrowers are about 5 inches, and 14 times that is about 5 foot 11 or something, is the way it's worked out. So everything in here, for example, um, we made an accurate model, and we found items in the shops that were appropriate to the size of our characters. And we just blew them up until we, we had models, and we, worked and we found things that fitted with our little models. So it's like sort of doll's house furniture gone crazy. Look at this action man! I know, he's so massive. One of the dangers of being a borrower um, is being seen by human beings. And this set, which is, is Pete Lender's shelf, Pete Lender is um, the human being, he's the child of the family. And this, this is his bookshelf, and I come out onto his shelf, and he, he, he accidentally sees me. And borrowers always think that if a bean sees the borrower, then they'll squish them. Young American actor Bradley Pierce, who starred alongside Robin Williams in the hit movie Jumanji, was selected to play Pete Lender, the young bean who first discovers the borrowers. Arietti sits down over here, and I notice that something's moving up here. And so I come running over, and she disappears back here. And so then I go down here looking around, and when I pop back up, she's standing right here. I catch her in the coffee can and take her to the fishbowl, which was a fun sequence because it had the motion control. I, I was talking to her, she was talking to me. We had, we had to do it all in sync, otherwise it wouldn't fit together. Wow. Go on, go ahead, Ben, get it over with. This is incredible. You can talk. Get what over with? The squishing? You are going to squish me, so get on with it. Why would you want me to do that? 
The real test for both actor and director was when Borrower meets Human together in the same scene. We did one very complicated shot where Bradley Pierce is talking to uh, Arietti. He's actually talking to a stick. So it's, it's getting not only the eye line to be exactly right for where we're going to put her, but also getting his performance to be right. This is amazing. So what I tried I to do was always that. have the other actor there off camera. So their timing would always be the same. They would be responding to each other in the same way. We have to move. The house is being demolished. Demolished? Yeah. My great aunt left us the house, but she didn't write it down in a will. So now, the stupid man Potter's gonna tear it down. So we have to move. Horrible, isn't it? I've been through your late aunt's files with a fine legal comb, and believe me, it just doesn't exist. John Goodman plays Osha's P. Potter, who's like the bad guy, and is going to demolish the house. So we are trying to um, get the will back from Mr. Potter so we can save the house. I don't care if it is short notice. I want this house flattened, and I want it flattened today. We have got to get that will to Pete. Don't be stupid. How are we going to get away from that huge beam? I don't know, but we've got to try. Come on. Hey, but come on. Where is he? I haven't had my lunch. Come on, people. Let's go that pile. Oh, I just thought it was a great story. Um, and I, I was keen to see it on uh, on a screen, and that's usually a good indication that what I'm going to be doing is going to be enjoyable for the next five, eight, ten weeks, whatever. Made more so by the presence of people like Mark Williams and Hugh Laurie, uh, who are the other humans I get to work with. But why do you want me to exterminate the Bonovers? Because those little rats stole something very important from me, and nobody steals from Osha's P. Potter. You mean borrowed, don't you? What? Uh, well, they're borrowers. They don't steal lib. Right. I'm playing Exterminator Jeff. It's kind of chippy, you know, and he's got a van and the, the, the side comes down and it's full of stuff. He's got a big exterminator kit, you know, that's a bit nuclear. So it's suddenly you've got this kind of quite retro -y world into which come, yeah, you know, he's given it. Deck to side, Fills up every nook and cranny. It burns on contact. Morning, gentlemen. Fine day, is it not? Is there something I can help you with, officer? Well, sir, a slight disturbance of the peace has been reported. It appears that an ice cream vendor... Pest control operative. Sorry. It's all right. Happens all the time. A pest control operative and a large man. Officer Steady is this gentle force of right who um, who puts the bad guy away. It's always a, it's a very satisfying thing to do. I've never done it before, to be the, uh, hopefully, to be the, um, the person that makes children go, hooray, he's here, right at the end, when the bad guy gets his um, just desserts. It's a very pleasing thing to be able to do, because I've never been able to do it in real life. You can only put out one fire at a time. My maternal grandmother would... You know, I could stand here and listen to you all day, but I gotta go. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, good day, gentlemen. Hello, it's us again. Reducing Tom and Flora to five inches high meant that some of the time they were acting to nothing more than a blue screen. Oh, that's a shame. Because we love you. Blue screen is basically a blue screen. And you stand in front of it and you act. And then they cut you out. And they put in a background where the blue screen was. Hello, it's us again. I hate you little people. Oh, that's a shame. Because we love you. So when it's finished, you will be acting to something to, that to everyone else looks like is there, but actually wasn't when you did it. On the real set, it was 44... Peter Chang is the visual effects supervisor on the film. It's his job to work out the complicated positions that the camera needs to be put in to ensure that all the shots fit together back in the editing room. The problem always is putting the miniature people into big scenes, you know. And we're working to a scale of 1 to 14. 
So it means shooting real live actors and scaling them down into shots to make them look believable that they're actually roaming around in the real life environment. This single shot was broken down into many different elements, employing various complicated visual effects to achieve the result the director wanted. The shot I wanted was Pod runs all the way around the kitchen, jumping over the sink, jumping on a, a broom, pivoting across to the stove, swinging on a coffee grinder, scaling the front of the fridge, and saving his son all without cutting the camera, the camera moving the whole time, so there appears to be no trick. We split the shot up into two blue screen elements, front and end. We decided to link up the two blue screen elements with a computer generated um, section in the middle where we would completely reproduce all the characteristics of Jim Broadbent. One, two, three. To get the movement of the computer-generated Jim Broadbent, the stunt guy has to wear all these like, little bright dots and does all the, the appropriate gymnastics and is recorded inside a computer. So as Pod is running around the, the kitchen, we can have him turn corners, we can do somersaults. Using the CGI character, he would then seamlessly blend into the blue screen elements. So the whole shot would appear as one, but is in fact broken down into sort of four elements. <laughs> much worse. It just got worse. The best bit, I fall into a big pile of dog poo. It looks very realistic, but of course it, it isn't real. But And I like fiddling with it. It's very, very, it's, it's very squishy, so I like to squish it around and play with it. One of my favourite bits was definitely in the borrower's house because there were just so many brilliant props there and it, would, it looks so good. It's so much fun with all the big props, you can just play with everything. One of the many amazing props that Tom and Flora got to play with was this huge roller skate. Don't touch that, don't touch that. A few additions from the special effects department and anything can happen. To escape the clutches of the evil Mr. Potter, Arietti and Pea Green wind up in a milk bottling plant, a sequence that Tom was not looking forward to shooting. I was in a huge milk bottle and I get splashed in the milk. See, I thought it was going to be very nice, but it wasn't as nice as I thought it was. Then I realised it was mouldy milk with food thickener. And, um, but it still was, it's a, it's a very interesting part. It wasn't very nice, but it's quite, it's quite good swimming around in milk, because you'll experience the water instead. What now, Spiller? What do we do now? End of the line, Herman! It's just a great looking film. I mean, it's unique uh, in that I've never really seen anything look like this. Originally, I thought the bigger people would be that it is the most amazing, seamless little people movie. But actually, that is all secondary to how marvelous Arietti is, how cute Pea Green is, how much you like these two, and how much you want to follow these two through the film. <laughs> It 
it fascinates everyone. Whoever you talk to about being a film about the borrowers, and everyone wants to see it, grown-ups and children in the night. When something like the borrowers comes on, you fall down on your knees and thank God for having sent you the borrowers, because this is something that adults and kids are, are going to absolutely love. London's Planet Hollywood was to play host to the first ever screening of the film. Along with the rest of the cast, Tom and Flora also invited 50 of their school friends. The ultimate test. Um, welcome to the very first screening of the bar. Someone doing James Bond movies, you know, real, real action stuff. I thought that was fantastic. It was such a good experience. What did you, what did you ladies think of it? It was great. Really 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 I'm going to make you see it. I'm about to do my GCSEs well next year, and um, my mum doesn't really want me to do anymore. She, she wants me to go back to school and get my degrees and everything. <laughs> but I'd like to do some more acting. 